Hey, what is up everybody and happy Friday. David Pendleton here doing a hole by hole breakdown of the Canada nine hole cup. So this is taking us back to our old school golf clash days where the wind angle direction is supposedly going to stay the same for the qualifying round and the final round. I'm super excited about that because this is what the game used to be like back in the day now. If you haven't been playing this game for more than two years, you're not familiar with this type of tournament structure. So basically what is supposed to happen, like on hole number one, how we have tailwind in tournaments right now, that would change on the front nine and back nine of the opening round. And then it would change again on the front nine and back nine of the final round. But for the qualifying round yesterday and today and the final round tomorrow, the wind angle direction arrow is supposed to stay the same. The only thing that will vary is going to be the wind strength mile per hour, and that goes by normal standard rookie rules. All right, let's dive into hole number one. Make sure you pack your runner club. We're going with a very long rough bump for shot number two to get this eagle to drop. One bar of side spin to the left, and you're going to notice here you're going to do top spin based off your wind mile per hour. 2.9 mile per hour here means we're going to go 5.8 top. We're going to put our green inner ring right here on the sand line. Yes, we are taking a risky drive here. You do need to hit perfect in order to make sure you give yourself your best chance to get this ball where we want it to go. And then we're using baby curl to the left. This is called inner wall left curl. That means the edge of the left hand side of your ball is going to bump up against the edge of the wall there. You can see here by adding that nice little left curl and that one bar of side spin to the left, we come down very nicely on the fairway. Now, shot number two, again, is gonna be played with your runner club. It's gonna be going max top spin, 0.3 side spin to the left. The 0.3 side spin to the left is based off my makes at 2.6 mile per hour, which you're gonna see here, and 3.3 mile per hour yesterday. There is a chance if you get hit with much higher wind, remember a berserker ball can go all the way up to 5.1 mile per hour in rookie. There's a chance if you get hit with higher wind, you might need to do a little bit more side spin to the left. But point three was really consistent. I got the ball guy line aiming right at the center of the hole. Make sure you don't accidentally underpower this shot. You wanna hit a good, clean, perfect shot. You wanna clip that rough and you wanna get yourself a nice little angle like this and you can see the ball smacking the pin dead center for the tougher eagle here on hole number one. All right, hole number two is gonna be a par three. 1.8 back, one bar of side spin to the right. You're gonna put your yellow ring right here on the rough line. You're going to apply your spins with your ball guy line going through the hole like this. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your ball guy line is nicely developed going through the back of the hole here as well. You're gonna see here, I get the ball, go, ball guide line going center. I'm gonna pull 25% at minimum. My pull is going to start here, you're gonna see it. At the red ring, pulling over the bullseye. Now stay tuned for replay number two, because replay number two is gonna have higher wind. In the higher wind scenario, we're gonna have just a little bitty offset to the right hand side of the pin. But you can see here, we come in very nicely for the hole in one. Okay, this next replay is gonna have wind at four miles per hour. It's going to be the exact same spin setup with the one bar of side spin to the right, 1.8 bars of back spin. Note here the yellow ring at the rough line again, but you're gonna see here, I'm just a little bit to the right hand side of the pin. You can see here my ball guide line is still fully inside the hole at 4.0 mile per hour, but it is definitely favoring the right hand side of the cup. Get that wind arrow pointing exactly north. Make your pull. Get yourself a perfect ball drop. As you can see, we come in smack center of the hole for the hole in one. Okay, hole number three is gonna take us to a uh, par five here. We're gonna go max backspin with our extra mile, two bars of side spin to the left. 
We're going to take three yards off of this drive and back up to the plus 27 with our green inner ring on the rough line, just like that. You're going to flip the camera around. You're going to push your rings here because the trees get in the way if you try to pull most of the time. You're going to push this one 20% at max. We don't normally play drives in rookie anything over zero. So 20% here is a big pull. Max curl to the left with an extra mile eight. Extra mile level nine players, if you're playing the shot, try to duplicate that curl the best that you can. But you can see here the ball comes in very nicely. It lands on the part of the fairway that we want, which is going to be out of that tree line right there on the right-hand side. If you execute your drive, you're going to have a great look here at your albatross opportunity. Two bars of side spin to the right always. Top spin to the hole and through the back of the hole. If you don't do this, you will come up short on your shot. I'm going to pull this one at 0% at max. I get myself a perfect ball, and this thing comes in very nicely for the albatross. Another center pin adjustment. Okay. Hole number four, we're going to use a katana because we do want the side spin to the right here. Three bars of side spin to the right. We're going to go with half a bar of top spin. I only dropped this shot one time, so I don't know how easy it's going to be to duplicate this shot, but it does give you a good idea of at least where to start. 3.7 mile per hour wind is kind of on that mid to higher scale for rookie division with a katana because you can get anywhere from 2.2 up to 4.5. So 3.7, like I said, kind of in that mid to upper. We're going to put our green inner ring on the rough line. We're going to pull this one 15% at mid. Perfect ball, and we do get ourselves nicely just above the sand trap into the hole for a hole in one. Don't accidentally underpower this shot. You can see here I did a little bit of underpower, which is why I came close to that sand trap. So just take yourself a nice, good, normal, perfect shot. Okay. Let's go here to the next hole, number five. No moving target with the rock. So that means as soon as the game gets started, you can apply your spin at one top, two bars of side spin to the left. Once your spin is applied, then you will move your target 0% at max. Overall, a very easy standard drive here with the rock, very accurate club. This is going to leave us very nicely for our shot here at shot number two to get this ball to drop in. Now, shot number two here, I don't drop this one. I do make one mistake because I got pressed up against the shot clock, which you're going to see. But here's your, going to be your spin adjustments for the most part. Two top, two left should be pretty consistent. You want to apply your spins first, and then you want to find the rough bump rollout. You're going to offset this one to the left-hand side of the pin, just like the graphic says. You see here, I was too far left, so I move it over to the right a little bit. But here's my mistake. When I move it over to the right, I pulled my target back. Um, so my ball guideline is not through the hole enough. It's not through enough from this long distance of a rough bump rollout. You're going to see here that I'm playing at 10% at max. I hit a perfect ball, but unfortunately, I'm going to come in right at the pin, but I am going to miss a little bit short. So make sure you push your target up a little bit higher than where I was. But look at that. That would have been probably another very close to dead center drop here on this particular hole. All right. We're going to go to a very short par four here, which we're going to go with a kingmaker. And uh, we're going to use our extra mile. So I did not have the right club set, but you can see I've got the right club now. And we're going to go one bar of backspin with 2.8 bars of side spin to the right. Now, from here, we're going to get our landing position, which is going to be basically this green inner ring very close to the rough line here on the right. Most importantly, we're looking to have our ball guideline developed in left-hand side of the pin. You get a really good look at it there. You can rewind it to get a better look. Um, but that's what we're looking for. Max of our club here. Ball guideline fully developed left the pin. It's pretty much imperative that you hit a perfect ball here. Not to put any pressure on you, but... 
Um, your, this shot is not great left or great right proof. You have to hit perfect. But you'll see here, if you do, you come in very nicely. Unfortunately, I come in just a little bit hot. And I smack the center of the pin, which would have been a lovely hole-in-one par four. Now, Adam did pick up the hole-in-one at pause and putt, so that'd be huge if he could pick that up tomorrow. But that is a very great shot that uh, that he put together for us there. Okay, hole number seven, we're going to go with no spin with our navigator. You're going to play at 45% at max. You're going to find your offset. You can see here the very end of my ball guideline is pin high and just pointing at the very left-hand side edge of that light green square, almost where the light green and the dark green square touch. Now, when you're taking shots like this, it's going to be uh, pretty offset dependent that you get it right. You see here in 3.9 mile per hour, I'm gonna pull 45% at max. I do have the correct offset here as we get a hole in one. Now, here's what I will tell you. You're going to need to burn a couple practice tokens on this hole because unless you get the exact same mile per hour as me, um, if you have lower wind, we probably need to move a little bit to the right-hand side. If we have higher wind, we might even need to bump this over a little bit more to the left. But, of course, a hole-in-one here gives you perfect precision starting point for this offset. All right, this takes us to hole number eight, which is going to be with another berserker because we're going over the water here playing in between the sand traps, perfectly centered with our green ring, two and a half top, two bars of side spin to the left. Um, I did get away with a great ball here. I did not practice this shot. I just played it for real just one time. And then um, I hit a great ball, like I said, but very luckily for me, I hit a great ball, roll out of the rough and onto the fairway for an easy chip in. Obviously hitting a perfect ball is going to give you better accuracy. It'll give you a little bit more yardage on the drive as well. But I want you to also notice that we are curling until our entire ball is outside of the circle adjustment window. Again, curling our entire ball outside of the circle adjustment window. Like I said here, I roll out very nicely onto the fairway for a short chip in. All right, this is going to take us to our final hole, hole number nine. We're going to go with four top, one bar of side spin to the left. You can play this with a kingmaker. You can play this one with a titan. It's whatever you want. We're not going to be utilizing the extra side spin of the Kingmaker. The only thing we're utilizing is the extra wind resistance trying to make this drop a little bit easier. We're going down between the two trees, trying to split those trees in two, as you see here. We're going to pull it 0% max. Again, four top, one bar of side spin to the left, aiming down the middle of the fairway. Take a normal shot, hit perfect. It's going to set you up in a beautiful range to try to pick up this albatross, which I do hit. If you watch me live today, you notice that I really struggled hitting perfect shots on my scorecard. I hit a ton of great shots, but even with hitting a bunch of great shots, I was able to drop two albatrosses. Now, the albatrosses, I did hit perfect, of course, um, but two albatrosses uh, helped me get to a minus 16 qualifying round scorecard. Now, four bars of backspin favor the right-hand side of the pin, which you're going to see here, pull 25% at minimum distance of your club. I do all the stuff that I just said, matches the graphic above. I hit a perfect ball and got a perfect ball drop. I did not practice this hole at all. Adam sent me um, what the adjustments were, and it worked out beautifully. Sometimes it works. Sometimes they need small little tweaks. But here you see, with this adjustment, we get ourselves a nice little rollout, and boom, just as it has been pretty common, smack in the center of the pin for another drop. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are your shots that you can play tomorrow, Saturday. Please make sure that you are subscribed to myself and Adam's channel as tomorrow on Adam's channel, he and I are doing a dual stream final round. All right, everybody. I look forward to that. Hopefully we'll see you there. Please subscribe. Please hit the thumbs up. I'll talk to you tomorrow.